If you want to be a data analyst, you have to learn SQL. And in this video, I'll tell you how you can learn SQL for 100% free. There are a ton of great SQL courses out there, many of which that I've taken, but what if you can't afford a course or if you just want to dip your toe in before making that investment? I've got you. In this video, I'm going to give you four phases to take you from complete SQL beginner to job-ready data analyst, along with all of the free resources you need to complete each step. Phase number one is learn. Before you can actually practice and use SQL, you need to learn the language, its syntax, and how to use it. To do this, I recommend using the three following resources. The first is a YouTube channel, and then the last two are free interactive SQL courses. Starting off, I cannot recommend the Alex the Analyst YouTube channel enough. On his channel, Alex teaches many different data analyst skills, including SQL, and he does a great job of explaining concept topics simply. On his page, Alex has several different SQL playlists to help you learn SQL, so I recommend starting either with the My SQL Basics tutorial series, which is his newer playlist, or with his SQL Basics for Data Analyst playlist, and then you can work up through his intermediate and advanced tutorial playlists. Here's the key. Don't freak out if many of these concepts don't make sense right off the bat. This is your introduction to a lot of new things, so don't get stuck on one topic at this point. Next is the W3 Schools Free Interactive SQL Course. With this course, you'll read about a specific topic, and then you will complete several practice problems to practice what you just learned. This course is incredibly beginner friendly, and it's a nice resource to come back to if you need to refresh yourself on a certain SQL concept. The last resource of this phase is the free Khan Academy SQL course. With this course, you'll watch a video explaining each SQL concept, and then you will complete a practice problem to write your own code from scratch. Then, at the end of each unit, you'll complete a mini project to put everything you just learned together. This is a great course because it gets you writing your own code immediately, so by the end of this course, you will have written hundreds of lines of SQL code. Throughout this learning process, you will become frustrated at times, but if you're working on something and you just can't quite understand it, you can always Google around or watch a YouTube video to help you understand. And now that you've learned all of the basics and you've written some code, it's time for phase two, practice. At this point, you should at least be familiar with basic to intermediate SQL concepts, so now it's time to practice what you've learned. I'm going to recommend several resources to help you not only practice writing SQL, but apply critical thinking to help you solve problems with SQL. And there are four SQL practice problem websites that are awesome, and I'll try to run through those quickly. The first of these websites is Analyst Builder. This is by far my favorite data learning platform, but only like 20% of the practice problems are free. However, a few things about this platform, including the video explanations, make it worth mentioning here. This also happens to be my favorite course platform, so if you decide to check it out and want to buy a course or a bundle, use the link in the description, and I might even have a code down there to help you save 25%. Second is HackerRank. This website is listed second because other than Analyst Builder, this is the website I've done the most practice problems on. I like this website because you can easily filter on the problems you've solved or not solved, you can filter on the difficulty, as well as subdomains you want to learn more about. And once you start working through the practice problems, they start off very easy, and you can choose what kind of SQL you want to complete the problems with. Quickly going through the other two options, the next one is Data Lemur. This is a really cool website because you can complete SQL problems based on specific companies. So if you really want to work for a specific company like LinkedIn, you can click on LinkedIn and then solve a problem that they've actually used in interviews. And then last is LeetCode. This website is very popular among coders of all domains, and the SQL 50 is very popular for data analytics learners. So at this point, you've learned the basics of SQL, you've solved problems using SQL, you've probably messed up and gotten frustrated a lot, so now it's time for phase number three. And phase number three is guided projects. On the job as a data analyst, you'll work on many projects that involve using your data skills, including SQL, to solve some kind of problem. 
Additionally, one of the best things you can do to land a job in data analytics is by building a portfolio to show that you're capable of completing these kinds of projects. A great way to get started with this is by completing some kind of guided project where an instructor will walk you through completing one of these projects. The first place you can find these guided projects is on YouTube. If you just search SQL project, guided project, data analyst project, you'll find plenty of projects to work on. What I'm about to say is very important. Some of these projects are not very good, so you probably don't want to add these to your data analyst portfolio. Additionally, a lot of other people will also have these projects in their portfolio, so hiring managers and recruiters have probably seen these projects a million times. The goal here is to get experience writing SQL and get a better idea of how to use SQL to solve problems on the job. The other place to find guided projects is in courses. Most courses nowadays will have you complete one or multiple projects because everybody knows how important a portfolio is to help you land a data job. Analyst Builder, for example, which I mentioned earlier, has 18 plus projects that you can complete on the platform, including five projects specifically for SQL. Finally, phase number four of learning SQL is doing your own original projects. At this point, you know enough SQL and how to problem solve with it to build your own projects from scratch. When you get to this step, you will almost certainly still feel unready, but that's the case with every data analyst. So here's what I want you to remember. Every data analyst out there uses YouTube, Google, and other resources to help solve problems, and you can do that too. For this phase, you'll download some kind of free data set. You can get free data sets from Kaggle, from Tableau Public, from Google Dataset Search, as well as others that I have listed down in the description, and you'll use that data to either solve some kind of problem or answer questions. Another important thing here is to not be a perfectionist. Your first project probably won't be that good, but your second project, you can build off of what you learned from the first project to make it even better. Coming up with ideas for what you want to do with your first original project is probably the hardest part, but use some of the ideas from the guided projects that you completed to help you come up with an idea for your own. Again, this step is hard because you don't have anyone holding your hand through it, but that's what a lot of data analytics is. As a data analyst, you'll face ambiguous problems on a daily basis, and all you can do is try things until you figure out a solution to each problem. Anyway, I hope this video helps you learn SQL. Remember that every resource I mentioned in this video is linked down in the description. And if you want to become a data analyst, I would really appreciate it if you subscribe to my channel. I post a brand new video every single week helping you become the best data analyst that you can be. And with that, I'll see you next week.